I want to talk about the real religion, man. Like everyone's, um, you know, up in arms over Islam right now because of the hordes that are, um, or the the uh, the alleged hordes that are attacking embassies. Right. Um, and if you go and, and do a very very quick internet search, you can immediately find the number of civilian casualties resulting from the war in Iraq and the war in Afghanistan. You'll find that the United States is far more dangerous than Islam when it comes to body counts in the world. And it's amazing to me that so many people, including Dawkins, including um, people that, that I have some respect for, because Dawkins has been on a tweet rampage against Islam, but it's like, man, yeah, I, of course, it is a repressive religion and, and, and it's terrible, but how are people not up in arms over the fact that our country is responsible for the deaths of easily 130,000 innocent people in the last eight years? or I don't know, in the last decade, yeah. 138,000 people. And then uh, people who are in that part of the world, we marvel at how angry they are at right. us. Why are they so angry? They must hate freedom. Over one fucking video, one shitty green screen video, they're right. writing. No, no. come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Do you really right. think that's why they're writing? They're writing because we've been fucking bombing them. Right. So I want to talk about the real religion that's ha that exists on the planet. And it's a religion that no one wants to accept as a religion. And it's the religion of... Capitalism. That's the fucking religion, man. That's what people are, 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 are engaged in right now. That's what people are worshiping right now. And if that's a dangerous fucking religion, right? That's yeah. the most dangerous religion that's ever existed yeah. on the planet. And it has ceremonies. It has traditions. It has the ceremony of going to work. What a wonderful ceremony that is. Yeah. You wake up and you put on your robes. You put on your suit, your yeah. suit the yeah. robes, right. the, the ceremonial. ceremonial. Yeah. yeah, and then you get in your... Then you get in your car and you join the initial um, uh, ceremonial dance. And what is that dance? It's called driving down the interstate <laughs> in, a, in a weird metal machine, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're engaged in the initial part of the... In the same way that those evil Muslims bow down on their prayer robes you sit down with your fucking hands in front of you stretched out towards the oh, in the direction my. of your fucking altar and you go to the altar and then you sit and you go through this terrible ritual where you are literally converting your life's energy into green bits of paper with Egyptian symbology on it that's the fucking religion we're engaged in man and no one's talking about it Yeah. and people say you know Oh, but look at the price when you uh, what is it called an apostate? What the what, what the uh, is it when you uh, reject Islam, the price is death. Yeah. What the fuck happens when you stop working? Right. Here in the United States, what happens when you stop work going to that shitty job? That's right. And you got Mitt Romney just yesterday getting caught saying, 49 percent of the people think they're entitled to food. Like, <laughs> how dare they? <laughs> You know, yes. they, they, they don't want to. And I love that Mitt Romney's wife got one on the 60 Minutes or whatever and was talking about how what a generous man he is. You know what? There's no one on earth who's worth $250 million who can be described as generous. No. Because if he was generous, he'd be a guy who had given away $250 million That's or $249 right. million. Oh. Keep a million. You know, why yeah. not? But you're not generous if you got $250 million. I don't give a shit. You know how many symphonies you've contributed to for the tax deductions. You know, <laughs> I know you are fuck not. That. Fuck that. You are not generous. You're an you're a sociopath right. who's managed to completely, completely shut your eyes to the reality yeah. of life on Earth. If you if you're hoarding away that much uh, fucking uh, energy. And what's capitalism? Getting back to your metaphor, what is capital? Or it's not even a metaphor. It's a religion. It's, it's, it's not a metaphor. It's true. What is you know, what, what is it that we're worshiping? It's not just money. It's the destruction of the planet. Yes. Right? Well, most of the people who make most money do it by fucking up the planet. Yes. In one way or another, dumping their shit in the river, dumping their shit in the air, you know, creating the you know, mountains of plastic or whatever it is. I, I recently read a great thing that ties directly into this. Um, it was uh, a British film company went to Papua New Guinea to do a documentary on the, you know, the Stone Age tribes of Papua New Guinea. And while they were there, one of the guys they were living with said, you know, we'd like to come and see where you live. Why don't you take us back to your country All and right. show us your thing? So when the, the producers got back to England, they talked to the, the money guys in the company and they were like, yeah, why not? That would, that would actually be a good show. Bring them, bring them here yes. and show them the marvels of the modern world. Hmm. So the guy who was talking about it um, 
I linked to this on my Facebook fan page, Sex at Dawn fan page recently, if, you're, if someone wants to check it out. I can't remember the name right now. But um, the, uh, so the guy went, he was worried that if they brought these people from the jungles of Papua New Guinea to London, they'd never want to go back mm. because they'd see toasters and microwave yeah. ovens and be like, fuck that. Uh, so he went and talked to some anthropologists about it, right? And the anthropologist, he talked to three different anthropologists, I think, and each one of them laughed in his face. And one <laughs> of them said, I can't believe how arrogant you are, that you think that someone's going to come here and want to like abandon their entire yeah. way of life because yeah. of the wonders of London, right? So don't worry about that. So they went and got these guys, brought them back to London, and housed them with a family, right? And after a couple of days, one of the, the, you know, the natives, we'll call them for lack of a better word, said to, they were having dinner, and he, he said, you know, I notice every morning, talking to the, the man, every morning you leave really early and you come home really late. But every day, wh- where are you going? <laughs> and the guy said, well, I'm going to work. And he's like, work? What, really working? You, you work a lot. And he said, why? And the guy said, well, I have to pay for the house. And he said, really? And the Papua New Guinea guy says, really? How many weeks do you have to work to pay for your house? <laughs> and the guy said, 30, 30 years. <laughs> and he said, what? <laughs> like, I need a house. My friends, we all get together. We build a house. It takes two weeks. I've got my house. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, you work 30 years yeah. to pay for this little house? Yeah. Like, what? Yes. See, here's, yeah. here's the thing, man. That's a beautiful example of what, the problem is because we can't understand how um, terrible the cult that we happen to be living in is because we are born into the cult. Well, you know what? You, you what the, the scenario you're describing is exactly the way I see the world, actually, as depressing as that sounds. Yeah. There has been uh, a genocide of native people all over the world. Right. Right. So what you were just describing is sort of the way a Native American could look at reality. Right. right? Like those fuckers, they came in, they murdered everybody. Yep. They've got this bizarre death cult, yes. these white people. Yes. They kill everybody. They kill everything. They fuck up the land. They fuck up the plants, the animals. They're, they're spewing poisons everywhere. They're fucking up themselves, but they just keep reproducing and spreading like a fucking cancer. Yes. And, you know, and they've relegated us to these tiny little impoverished, you know, places. And now we've got casinos. Thanks a lot. Um, You know, those few of us who've survived, but our entire way of life is destroyed. Right. Yes. And they make fun of us in their, you know, their movies. And, you know, they explain the cowboys and Indians. Always the Indians were the bad guys. Sure. All they were trying to do was say, leave us alone. Yeah. You know, the Indians weren't. Like, you know, riding into New York to kill people, you know? Right. They were staying where they'd always been. Yeah. So, so I, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, even when someone talks about the Holocaust, I, I'm always tempted to say, that's just one Holocaust. There yeah. are many Holocausts. You can go to Cambodia and talk about a Holocaust. You can go to, you know, Rwanda. You can go to North America, Central America, mm-hmm. South America. Yeah. There are Holocausts going on all over the place. Yep. And, you know, as, as, as much as I agree with you that there were unique qualities of the, the Nazi thing, one of the more unique qualities is that Jews are white. Right. You know? The American Indians aren't white, so it's easier to kill them and forget about them. Yeah. You know, and there were even debates as to whether American Indians were human. Uh, Bartolome de las Casas was uh, debating in the Vatican with uh, Sepulveda. They had, they had this whole intellectual debate, like... Do we really need to treat them like people? Do they really have souls? Wow. You know, and there was this famous debate, which De Las Casas won, arguing that, yes, they are human, so they do have some rights. But, of course, you know, no one in, in practice, nobody dealt with that. Oh, uh, can you imagine two fucking honkies in the middle of some <laughs> satanic <laughs> corruption of Christianity? Yeah. That's, G- think, think, if there truly was a historic Jesus. Right. And you went back to before he got nailed up, and you're like, hey, guess what? You're def- at one point, your followers are going to be arguing over whether or not right. humans are humans so they could decide whether or not to kill them. Right, yeah. That is so vile. So this is the thing, man. It, it's the 
So you're right. I mean, just to wrap it up, I, I think you're absolutely right that we are descendants of the exterminators. Yes. So what do we do? This is the big question. What is what? This is something that I always, you know, um, I'm pretty good at working myself up into a shrill, you know, into a, a lather, sh- a shrill lather, a shrill hippie lather, you know. Uh, but 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 I always end up, you know, outside of thinking, okay, well, I can, I know I can improve myself. And I know I can educate myself, mm. and I know I can try to separate myself as much as possible from, you know, the the poisons of the world. But still, what are some actions people can take uh, to move in the direction of not being descendants of exterminators? Yeah, I don't know, man. I, Damn it! You yeah. always say I don't know. I don't. Well, yeah, I don't. I, you know, I, one of my favorite quotes is is respect the man who seeks the truth, flee from him who claims to have found it. Ah, that's great.